What's going on YouTube? In this video, we'll be comparing what people are calling the best camera ever made, the Sony a7S III and the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. Like the a7S III's predecessor, I called BS on this camera and actually made fun of it a lot. Initially, I was really suspicious of the reviews, but after reading some reviews and watching some, I got really curious. Did Sony actually nail it this time around? Well, there's only one way to find out. Now first off, I'm gonna go ahead and say the D word. Just a disclaimer, I paid for these cameras myself, so I am not affiliated at all with any of these companies, so I can say whatever the F I want. Uh, secondly, if you're looking for scientific tests, you can go ahead and stop this video now because I like to test cameras outside, although I do include some indoor shots here and there now for you guys. Now my first couple of tests, I tested the A7S III by itself, but I wasn't too happy with the result I got, so I got the Ninja V so that I can record ProRes RAW. So my review will be ProRes RAW unless stated otherwise. Now lastly, I will only be talking about things that I care about, so if I don't mention something you would like to know, just hit me up in the comments below. All right, so first things first is low light capabilities between the two. The Sony a7S has been crowned the low light kings many times before, and I have compared Blackmagic cameras and Sony cameras before, so I had an idea on what the result would be prior to actually doing my test. But to my surprise, the Pocket 6K actually beats out the Sony a7S III up to 8000 ISO in both internal and ProRes RAW. After that, obviously the a7S III wins by default because you can go up to hundreds of thousands of ISO on the Sony a7S III. At ISO 12800 S-Log3, the image does look cleaner internally, but if you look closely, you will see that the image looks noise reduced in my opinion, but it could also be the compression or both. In ProRes RAW 12800 doesn't look as processed, which looks so much better. I'd rather do my own noise reduction in post rather than having the camera do it for me. The last thing to note about low light is compared to other Sony cameras I've used in the past, I gotta say the A7S III is probably the noisiest as far as 8000 and below, but Sony still wins low light because you can see more in the dark. Now next up is quality and color between the two. Detail and sharpness wise, the two cameras are very close, but three things that stood out are one, if you watch on a bigger screen or zoom in or a pixel peeper, the Pocket 6K will yield more detail. Second, the A7S III also had problems with patterns for some reason. And third is color. Like I've said many times before, you can make almost everything look good, even iPhones, if you spend more time and effort. But out of the camera, the A7S III really prefers green and it takes a little bit to get it corrected in post, especially and skin tones. Next category is shadow recovery. In my opinion, negative four stops is probably the lowest you can get away with the Sony a7S III. Well, the Pocket 6K, you can still use negative four and negative five if need be. Now, moving to highlight recovery. Now, this one is tough and I can't talk about it without talking about the codex as well. So I will be combining highlight recovery and recording format. ProRes RAW was released April of 2018, while Blackmagic RAW was released September of 2018. They're roughly the same age, but Blackmagic RAW has a highlight recovery feature built in that when used, just destroys the A7S III in highlight recovery, even when using ProRes RAW. Now after reading comments on my channel, some say that the ProRes RAW A7S III has more detail and highlights since it's rated 15 stops or dynamic range, but there isn't a way to retrieve it at this moment, which could be a legit argument. Which brings us to codex support. So why is a $2 trillion company having issues developing Apple ProRes RAW? Even worse is if you're on Windows, you have two options to develop ProRes RAW. A Simlet Scratch, which has a hideous UI and have an expensive monthly plan, or Premiere Pro that crashed on me a million times when editing ProRes RAW for this video. Now next is dynamic range. Sony claims the A7S III has 15 stops to dynamic range, while the Pocket 6K has 13 stops. Honestly, I don't know where that 15 stop is on the A7S III, but then again, my tests were not scientific, so maybe that's it. I do feel like the Pocket 6K has more DR than the A7S III, so Pocket will take dynamic range. Now next up is slow motion. By itself, the A7S III got a massive boost slow motion wise. With ProRes RAW, you can shoot 4K up to 60 frames per second. The Pocket 6K can shoot 6K up to 50 frames per second. If you drop down resolution, you can even get more slow motion. So the Pocket will take slow motion. Although one caveat is that the Pocket 6K is crippled by the available media for it. I don't think there is a CFast 2.0 card that's out right now that can record 6K at full quality Q0. Media manufacturers need to hurry up and make one. But then again, Q5 is plenty enough for some people. Which brings us to the next topic, recording options. 
Internally, the A7S III is still hanging on to dear life on their XAVC, but they were at least smart enough to make a deal with Atomos and let Atomos record externally to ProRes RAW. On the other hand, like mentioned before, Pocket 6K has Blackmagic RAW internally and ProRes internally, so Pocket 6K takes this since RAW internally is a no-brainer here and ProRes is a sweet deal internally as well. Battery life. Since the Pocket 6K records RAW and it records to Canon LP and batteries, there's a no-brainer here. The A7S III will win battery life and power. Now let's talk about the inputs. The two cameras have pretty similar inputs. The only thing separating the Pocket 6K as far as I'm concerned is the Mini XLR and the USB-C on the Pocket 6K that lets you record a cheap external SSDs. Input goes to Pocket 6K. Screen. The A7S III got a new fancy screen with this time around and it flips 180 awesome articulating screen for the vloggers. Even though the Pocket 6K screen is bigger, the A7S III will have to take screen. Next up is menu system. If you have been with me for a minute, you know how much I hate Sony menus. I used to call it the menuception because they're like menus within a menu within a menu. But luckily, A7S III does have a new fancy system menu system right now, but I still find myself having to look up where everything is because the layout is still pretty bad. Some of the options I think are not grouped properly, but it's progress. So Pocket 6K will take menu yet again. Okay, last thing we'll talk about are features. I'm gonna go on record right now and say that the Sony a7S III has the best autofocus I have ever used on a camera. It's pretty scary how good the AF is in both stills and continuous video. Really impressed with it. Another feature the a7S III has is stabilization. So if you like using IVIS, then a7S III got you covered. Steals mode. Even though the Pocket 6K has stills capability and has more megapixels than a7S III, I will have to give stills to the a7S III because it is a DSLM after all. It's much easier to take pictures with a7S III than the Pocket 6K. And lastly, a feature the Pocket 6K has that a7S III don't is anamorphic shooting. When anamorphic lenses is getting cheaper by the minute, I think all video cameras should have anamorphic mode natively. Okay, I promise, I am almost done with this. Now let's talk about the price. Right now the Pocket 6K is priced at $1995. If you already have the Vinci Resolve, you can sell your license for about $150 to $200. So really the Pocket 6K is actually less than $1995. The A7S III is priced at $3400 body only. Then with an NGV and SSD, you're looking at $4400. So which one to buy? If you're an aspiring filmmaker and want the best quality out of a video camera, image-wise, get the Pocket 6K. There's nothing in the market right now that can't compete with this camera at this price point. There's none. If you absolutely need autofocus and being able to see at night, like wildlife videography, grab the A7S III. In my opinion though, grab the Ninja V to get ProRes RAW as well because the quality you get internally is not worth $3,500, I think. If you are balling and controllably, get both. Combining these two cameras as an A cam and a B cam is actually pretty legit. These two cameras combined is still cheaper than buying one red Komodo Stormtrooper. Well guys, make sure you check out my playlist where I show you guys my tests individually. I also have a lot of downloadable footage for you guys to play around with so we can see what I saw when comparing these two cameras. Also, I do have an Amazon store now, so if you want to support the channel, go ahead and check it out. Uh, buy some shirts or something like that for your loved ones or your kids. If you guys have any questions, let me know and I will see you guys later.